Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. I'm Dcash Gaming, and we're back with another race at the track race review. And well, let's get started on this review. I went to the Sydney race the day before. It was a great race. Uh, Extreme always puts on a good show there. Uh, the Cup also put on a good sh show this week. But I have my complaints. But we'll start off with like what goes going on around the track, especially the fan area. The fan area was a great was a great place to be. A lot, a lot of stuff going on. Although, you know what I noticed? Where were all the Chase Elliott fans? Like, there's a lot of Chase Elliott fans. But Kyle Larson also has a lot of fans at Charlotte. Like, a lot of fans. I saw people leaving the, the uh, merchandise haulers. Not with Chase Elliott stuff. But with Kyle Larson stuff, I think it'll be really interesting to see the most popular driver vote this year. Anyways, so pre-race, they had, they had, it was pretty good. Um, they had a really cool flyover uh, with a great big plane. Uh, I don't remember what plane it was. I want to say it's a C-17, but I'm, I can guarantee that's not right. Anyways, but um, yeah, Daniel Craig... Uh, if you know him as James Bond, he uh, was the honorary starter. Little highlights there. Um. So, I think at this point, NASCAR needs to just get rid of the two laps for the stage you can't pit. I don't know how else to say it. Lap nine, you had at least 10 cars pit for tires. And then left, oh, well, this is, I guess this is competition caution, sorry. But you had a lot of people gaming the competition caution even. What's the point of throwing it if people are going gaming, right? You had, people pit bef you had 15 people pit before the, the competition caution. So what's the point of the competition caution if you're just gonna pit anyways? Anyways, uh, that bad church chicane, a lot, of, a lot of spins through there. Brad Kozowski, I think, spun twice. Uh, he had tough breaks going through there a couple times. And then the first caution of the day was Brian Newman. Spinning off a of turn 14. Um, hit the outside wall hard, going to the last chicane. and his day. Um, yeah, uh, there was a two lap, sh there's like a, I think like a two, three lap shootout for the stage and AJ AJ Allendier won stage one after winning the Xfinity Series race, looked like he was going to have a sweep, and then he came back to the field again, but we got a lot of into a front you can bring out cautions as well. Which, you know, is alright, I think. This race is a little bit longer. It had nine cautions, I believe, is the average. Or according to MRN. I think we had nine. But I'm not going to give it as much trouble as the Xfinity Series race. Because nine times three is 27, right? 27 divided by 107 is still a little bit over a quarter of the race. I know caution lengths vary. I just give it a, a different number because, you know, you have to catch the pace car. Then you have to let everyone pit. And then you have to get everyone lined up on the back straight and they, they get ready to go green. So three laps is not, that's like the minimum. It's a little less than Xfinity Series race percentage-wise, but I'll, I'll give it this one. The race was way, was a little bit longer to the point where it didn't feel like it was just all cautions. There's a lot of green flag racing. And then... We gotta get to the uh, everyone's favorite moment. Well, if you're a, if you're a Harvick fan, at least um, Harvick. Uh, I don't know how else to say. Harmon ran over Chase Elliott. Right, ran over the back bumper for Chase Elliott. Threw him into the outside, uh, the right hand fence. Going through turn six, I want to say one, two, three, four, seven. I want to say turn seven. 
So that was a big moment. I thought for sure Chase Elliott was done. I saw that car, how much damage it had. I was like, that, there's no way that car is going to keep going. Miraculously, that car was drivable. And then as soon as I saw him repair the car, I'm like, oh, let's send the car back out. I'm like, oh, no. I'm not a Harvick fan, but that was an interesting, interesting deal. Now, AG on the, on the restart afterwards, the engine expired. Shame for him. I thought he was going to win the race. He was doing extremely well. And that car sounded sick on the on the uh, restart. I, I heard it, and that car was for sure sick. I don't know how to describe it. It was, it sounded like a lawnmower. Uh, as soon as I heard that, I'm like, oh, who is that? Because that's not good. Anyways. So then, they had a long green flag run. And, and Chase Elliott, this is the other big problem I have with NASCAR. So everyone's, so this is the big debate, right? Chase Elliott's bumper. Chase Elliott's bumper has nothing, if it's required part or not, it has nothing to do about it waving, you know, two feet behind the car. Or however long it is. I'm not sure how long it is. I think it's like three feet. So three feet behind the car. How is, you know it's going to cause a caution. He's hoping it causes a caution. Give him the black flag. Give them the black flag. David Hoots would have never put up for that. NASCAR officiating has gotten terrible. I don't know how else to describe it. It got, it's gotten terrible. And the caution lines have gone much higher. And the officiating, especially this year, especially this year, has gone absolutely horribly wrong. You look at New Hampshire, the rain, right? That's a big de- That was a big deal. And there's been a couple more sprinkled out. That was the big one, though, I, I think, of New Hampshire. Until, until today, or not, not today, because I'm recording this way after the race. Until that race, until Bank of America at the uh, 500. Why did you not throw the black flag? I'm curious. I know it's not a required part on road courses. That's not my concern. But it's going to cause a caution. Or there's a high chance to be causing caution. So just black flag him. Keep the race green. The race was amazing. I don't know how it looked on TV. I haven't looked at it yet on TV. But the race was amazing. In my opinion. As a fan of the track. Without needing a caution. The race was exciting. There was battles everywhere. People hitting Beating bang, going to turn one, exiting turn eight, going through the chicanes. It was an amazing race. It was a good time. But we don't need we didn't need that caution. We didn't need that caution. Anyways, uh pitch strategy. Uh good there. And then everyone saw the chase up first thing, I think. People who didn't pit, I think might have had pit early for the Chase Elliott bumper because everyone knew it was going to cause a caution. Everybody knew it was going to cause a caution. But NASCAR just sat down, but it must have been looking the other way or something. I don't know. It was pretty obvious that that was getting looser and looser. It was waving more and more. It was starting to wave more uh, frequently. Uh, anyways, I don't know. Moving on from that, uh, Brad Kozlowski got spun again going to Chicane. He had a tough, he had a few tough luck. And then, Corey LaJoy hit the turn three wall, sent out a lot of debris, hard hit two. It was, then the restart afterwards. Guess who lined up behind Kevin Harvick, or a couple of rows behind him? Chase Elliott. Now I saw that, and I was like, oh no, this is going to get really horrible for both of them. Because at this time, Chase Elliott was out of the playoffs. This, he would have been out of the playoffs if nothing happened Nothing happened to one of the other drivers. Well, something happened. Restart. 
Kevin Hart, or Chase Elliott was closing in. Kevin Harvick was must been, must have been told that Chase Elliott was behind him or looked in his mirror, saw him, and then hit the wall. Now, there are reports of that he hit another car and it might have broke his, his it might have damaged his uh, braking, but for how hard he hit it, I think he was more worried about Chase Elliott than he was worried about the hit to his car. I think that had a lot more to do with the, with the wreck. That was a hard hit. I, I heard it from where I was sitting. It was a pretty hard hit and killed the car. Now, y'all may be wondering if you watched it. Well, why didn't Chase Elliott's car break 2019 and when he won the race? But Kevin Harvick hit, hit the same wall and destroyed his car. Well, that part's concrete. That's not tire barrier. Or it might be safer barrier. But it's not the tire barrier that Chase Elliott ran into. Anyways, that was a big deal. Kevin Harvick out of the playoffs. Chase Elliott into the playoffs. And then Kyle Larson had the lead and just drove away into the sunset with the lead from our favorite. I, I gained a lot of respect. As, uh, I'm not a William Byron fan, but I, I, have, I do like William Byron a little bit more than I did before. Anyways, uh, William Byron leading... Went through the chicane, uh, got, and then tried to make up some more spots, stay in the playoffs. He got off track from third and turn five and just killed that car. Um, Kyle Larson won. Kyle Larson, dominant this year. I don't know how else to describe it, but will we see it again? Okay. I'm pretty sure he's the same amount of wins as Harvick did last year. Will we see? Well, no, never mind. I'm wrong. I was going to say that if he couldn't get in the playoffs, but he just locked himself in literally three days ago. So, anyways, yeah, he locked himself in at Texas. Well, I got a little bit of editor's note here afterwards. Uh, going, through, going through, I forgot, completely forgot to mention Kyle Larson's day. Kyle Larson's day at this race was ex- phenomenal. For his performance. He had a battery problem. He had an alternator problem. And then. He got behind a pit strategy. So he had to, he had to go through the field like four times. And every time he went through the field. He was just flying. Kyle Larson. I know everyone might be saying Kyle Larson was like. He went too many times or whatever. But I think all the people just shut up. Like I, I'm going to call it as it is. He drove through that field and earned it. I don't know how NBC uh, showed how the race was, but that was Carl, that was Carl Larson's race. Uh, after AJ Allmendinger, here, who dominated pretty much the first stage, Carl Larson should have won that race. But anyways, I will rate the Bank of America, Bank of America Roval 400. I will rate it an eight and a half out of ten. It was a great race. But I think just officiating errors just really got me there. I don't know why that was a thing. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Until next time, you all have a good one.
Here we go. Up through the gears. Here. I like 